Hi everyone, I'm Shai, I'm a developer evangelist here at Superblocks, and I'm really excited to teach you everything I know, everything I've learned in the last few weeks, how you can get started building custom internal tooling using our platform. So let's go. So quick highlight of what we're gonna run through during this video. We're gonna be taking a quick look at what is Superblocks. We're gonna take a look at some things that you can make with Superblocks. We're gonna shift into building things. We're gonna build an application. We're gonna build a workflow. And we're gonna wrap up by building a scheduled job. You might be wondering, what is Superblocks? We're an internal tooling platform that is 100% designed for developers. We're not a no-code, low-code tool. We are Pro code, and we simplify every step in the software deployment process, whether it's building things, securing things, uh, deploying, or just even monitoring stuff. You can query all sorts of stuff straight from Superblocks, your database, your SaaS vendors, any APIs that, that have a REST or GraphQL endpoint you can take advantage of, uh, and all sorts of object storage. Using those things, you can then go ahead and build an application, a workflow, or a scheduled job. You can extend those UI using JavaScript and uh, write business logic with Python uh, as well. And in this uh, tough macro climate, Superblocks uh, helps accelerate the, the really painful process of building custom internal tooling by enabling you to take your back-end developers and turn them into full-stack developers. They don't need to learn any front-end skills and they'll save hundreds of hours on building tooling and you can reallocate them back to your core business product. Also with Superblocks, you're, you're building tooling which is going to increase the efficiency and the accuracy of your business teams and make them more effective and more efficient. And we already have management and security at top of mind. We have granular permissioning you can take advantage of, we have SSO you can take advantage of, full audit logs, and you can also deploy your applications with version control. So let's take a look at a couple examples of things that we can build with Superblocks, and then we can go ahead and we can dive into making some stuff ourselves. So first off, I want to imagine that you're a credit card company. So you need to take a look at applications from folks and decide, okay, is this person going to be approved or rejected for my credit card? And we actually built this as a demo for one of our fintech customers. We built this in an afternoon. It's using Python, JavaScript, Postgres, and all sorts of APIs, including Persona and Aloy for KYC status and Equifax and TransUnion for underwriting. Now, as a support agent, I can identify pretty quickly which applicants have passed or failed their checks. I can filter it if I need to. If I click on an applicant, we can learn more data about them. We can see their driver's licenses. We can see their credit scores. And when we click approve or reject, we can log a reason why we're going to do that. And, and that'll get saved and chucked in the bottom here. So we'll be able to see, you know, the approval reasons or the rejections reasons as well. Now, that's just one example. Next example, we're gonna take a look at a SaaS company. So this hypothetical SaaS company needs to do billing, support, upgrading plans. They have all sorts of customers that they can they need to check in. And so this customer success team is using this tool to deal with support and billing, like I said, and changing plans. With this tool, we're using Stripe, Zendesk, and Salesforce, and we're collating them all into this one place to make it easy for that customer support agent, customer success agent to take advantage and do whatever they need. Need. They can quickly identify who the user champions are. They can quickly pull up all sorts of tickets from Zendesk and they can, you know, even change plans right from here. So if we hit the update plan button, you know, we can drop down to, oh no, they only want to pay for pro and we can confirm it. And there we go. We've gone ahead and changed their plan straight away. We've shifted them over. So. Last up, we're going to take a look at an e-commerce site. Imagine for a second, maybe your Wayfair or your Ikea and your support team needs a tool to take Zendesk tickets and help, you know, process refunds, figure out what's going on with customer orders. So this dashboard takes Zendesk ticket IDs. You can plug them in here. It'll grab the associated order, which we can click into. It'll give us the shipping status here. And then we can go ahead and we can even process refunds from right where my head is blocking if we need to. And it'll trigger an email letting the customer know, hey, the, uh, the refund has gone through. So this is taking data from Zendesk, Postgres, Snowflake, S3, and it's probably going to hit an internal API or two uh, to manage this entire process. And it just makes it so efficient and easy for a support agent to take care of their process and uh, not waste time jumping around between a bunch of different, different places. 
The last thing I'm going to show you is a DevOps dashboard that I put together. So this is my dashboard. I have built this dashboard to keep an eye on what's going on with our Superblocks agent, which is a GitHub repo we have that's public. And so I have access to all the pull requests that are getting made. I can see I have to go review one today. So I guess I have an assignment for myself. I can see who's on call. I can see the full on call schedule and see who's going to be coming off call. Uh, what's fun is I can also keep an eye on my performance. So here we've got some insights that are coming in from Datadog, and I'm able to take a look at AWS and see, oh no, you know, maybe we spent a little more on AWS yesterday than we've done for the remaining days of the week. Let's go ahead and send myself an email uh, to let me know that something's up and that I need to go ahead and dive in and take a look. And that email just came through, so let me pull that over. And we can see, you know, hey, Shy, Shy has requested you since I'm the one who clicked it. Take a look at the DevOps dashboard and then a link I can click that'll take me straight here. So that's pretty fun as well. So we can go ahead and transition, I think, from showing off some use cases into building things. And I'm gonna try my best to rebuild this DevOps dashboard right here in Superblocks today during the demo. And it'll show ideally how easy and fast it is to start getting data and start pulling things in. Now, before we go into things, I wanna take a look at the integration section. We have all sorts of integrations available. The integration that you're looking for isn't available right here in Superblocks. We also have REST access and GraphQL access. So you can hit the REST APIs and the GraphQL APIs of all sorts of tools to take advantage of them from Superblocks. Now, I've gone ahead and pre-connected two integrations already. I've hooked up my Google Drive because we're using a Google Drive sheet to track on-call status, and I've gone ahead and hooked up GraphQL to the GitHub GraphQL endpoint. I really like GraphQL because you get kind of exactly what you ask for from, from the endpoint, but we could also have done this via REST if we wanted to. GitHub is a really great REST API as well. So let's go ahead and get started by creating a new application, and we can call it DevOps dash and if I want to organize it I can pick a folder I'm just gonna go ahead and leave it out of a folder for now I'm gonna hit create application and to get started let's take a look at some of these components we have so we've got all sorts of stuff so I'm gonna start with a basic text element and I'm gonna make it nice and big and I'm gonna go ahead and label it DevOps dashboard and we can change that to a heading and you know we're all already starting to build it out this is all kind of preset so it's going to look great it's going to look consistent and next up let's go ahead and start getting some data let's go ahead and pull in some information from github so we can hit that github graphql endpoint first up i'm going to build a table i'm going to make it bigger so we can see it nicely i'm going to go ahead and label it to pull request status and we can see here that the table is looking for data in this format. It's going to need an array of objects, and it's going to use that to populate the row. And we can see here this is kind of just static JSON. We're going to need to get something a little more dynamic. So we're going to go ahead and build a backend component. All of this stuff here is in the front end. All of this stuff here is for editing the front end. And we can go ahead and pull up the Superblock back end, which is going to be down here. These two things are kind of separate and distinct great things. Everything that you need to do with transforming data or backend stuff is down here. And anything you need to do with front end is going to be over here. So let's get started by hooking up the GitHub GraphQL API. And it's already pre-connected to the URL. If we scroll down, we can see what my authorization token for GitHub is. So I'm going to go ahead and copy paste my query into here. I'm going to go ahead and hit run. And then we can go ahead and maximize this with command U. And we can see, you know, we're getting all sorts of data back. You know, we can keep clicking into it and start seeing, okay, we've got nodes that have all sorts of information that we'll probably want in our columns. We've got an author of subchild that has like a URL. So if we want to see what Frank looks like, we can go ahead and click that pretty easily. But it is distinct from that table format. So we're not getting that array of objects. So let's go ahead and pull up a programming language. We've got JavaScript and we've got Python. I'm going to use Python and I'm going to go ahead and start labeling my application. So we can call this get GitHub PR and we can go ahead and call this step GitHub. Now, what we name these is actually pretty important because that's how we're going to reference them later in the project. So with this Python script, I'm going to go ahead and reference that GitHub step. And I can do that just by labeling it 
as GitHub. And we can see that the object that I'm crawling through is going to match what we're getting from that GraphQL request. And so what I'm doing here is I'm creating an empty array, I'm looping through each of my edges, and I'm go ahead, going and just kind of cleaning things up. I'm pulling that author URL down or up a level so it's not a child dictionary, it's just going to be a key straight up on that higher level. And now when I hit run, it's going to make that request and it's going to format it how I like. So I'm happy with this, we're returning it, so I'm happy with all the transformations of the data that's taken place. I'm just going to go ahead and label this data parsing, data parsing, and I can use command J to minimize it. I can go back to my table now and I can use these double curlies to access data from Superblock. So we're going to hit that get GitHub PR and we're going to grab the response from it. And you can see it's going to automatically populate the table with the information that we got from the backend call right over here. And we can start changing how this looks. So let's go ahead and hit author URL and we can change that to an image. Um, so it's going to change to an image. Now we can maybe relabel this to just author. We don't need to see the URL, we need to be able to click on it. So I'm going to hide the URL and I'm going to go ahead and set the title. Instead of being text, we're going to make it a link. We're going to set that link to the current row.url as well. We can go ahead and hide the ID because I don't need that. We can change the review decision to let's say a tag because it's going to be the same things or so. I hate looking at dates in this format so we're going to hit the update at and we're going to change that to a date format. Superblocks is going to automatically grab it and parse it and we can go ahead and change it into something a little nicer to read. So maybe you know do it in the, the dough format and merge can switch into a boolean so it'll be a check mark. That is not, that's a button. We want a Boolean. There we go. So we've got our check mark. And maybe we can do some sorting. We can set the sort to be off that merge column. So the things that are unmerged will be, you know, kind of top of top of view. And we can, you know, reorder this as we want. So maybe we move the title to the top and maybe just go ahead and extend that so it's a little easier to read as well. So we can do all sorts of stuff, all sorts of customization here to make it more useful. Now let's go ahead, figure out what's going on with the on-call status. So I'm going to go ahead and just move my table down a little bit and give myself a little bit of room. And I'm going to pull in a new text object and I'm also going to pull in a slide out. So let's start with the slide out. So I'm going to say with my slide out, I want to see the full on-call schedule. So we can label this slide out to on-call schedule. And now we're going to need to actually get the data. And so to first get started, we're going to pull up our backend again, and I'm going to go ahead and create a new backend API, and I'm going to connect to Google Docs, and I'm going to rename this to a get on call, get on call schedule. And we can go ahead and grab the specific spreadsheet. So we've got our DevOps sheet. It's going to load the sheet name, which I hadn't changed. This is going to be sheet one, which is the default in Google Docs. And then we can go ahead and run this action and it's going to give us this table with all of our information. It's going to be labeled get on call schedule and let me G drive get and we can go ahead and close this with command J or click on it and I can pull in a table into this slide out. So we're going to get this table, we're going to put it in here, we're going to go ahead and maximize it. I'm going to get rid of the table header since it's kind of a duplicate from the one that we have up there. And then for the data, we're going to grab that response as well. So we're going to have that get on call schedule dot response. And now we have a nice little slide out that we can click whenever we want to open the slide out and get the full on call schedule. So I want to find out who is on call today. So I'm going to need to do some business logic on that slide out information. And I'm going to go ahead and do that a few times. I'm going to use that information in a couple different places. We're going to use that information from inside Superblocks and we're going to use that information from outside of Superblocks as well. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to head back to the homepage and I'm going to create a new workflow. So a workflow is a rest endpoint that you can take advantage of from outside of Superblocks. So we can go ahead and hit create workflow, hit next, and it's going to give us this URL that we can post. Right now it's not doing anything because I haven't set, set it to do anything. We can copy paste it and maybe I can pull up iTerm and we can do this post just to make sure it works. And I'm going to pipe it into JQ so it'll be readable and you can see, you know, it's, it's made that request, it's got that response and we've received that request within Superblock. So we can hit next and we can go ahead and pull in our Google Drive. We're going to reuse that same spreadsheet as before. So DevOps, 
and then we'll go ahead and use the sheet one. We can go ahead and label this step again because we're going to be referencing it later. So we need to go ahead and name it. I'll hit run and we'll go ahead and get our information. And then I'm going to build a quick Python script that's just going to loop through. It's going to use the datetime library, which is one of the libraries that we include in the Python 3 instance that we use here. We've got all sorts of libraries pre-installed and you can check our documentation for, for both the JavaScript and the Python documentation for the list of the full libraries that we have pre-installed. And if you need something that isn't included, just ping our support team and we will get it on our roadmap. So here we go. We've got, you know, who's on call today. It turns out it's me. Uh, we're just doing a quick loop to pull who's on call today and who's on call tomorrow, or who's on call between the date start and the date end. So we've got, we can call this find on call. And now we can use this, we can go ahead and deploy it, and I'm going to call it initial deploy. And we can go ahead and make a call request. So we can actually use this outside of Superblocks. We can use this in the terminal and we'll be able to make requests from other applications. So we'll be making a request from Slack in just a bit. You can see here I've made one curl command and I can see that I'm on call and get that data. And also since we've deployed it, we can also do version control now. So we can see here I've got that initial deploy and if I needed to roll back, I could you know drop down and I could redeploy something earlier and I get to see who deployed it. So I've got my auditing as needed. So let's go back to our application. Now that we've created this single workflow, we've made a call to it from outside Superblocks. Let's make a call to it from inside Superblocks. So I'm gonna pull up my backend and I'm gonna maximize it again. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit new backend API. We're gonna pull in a new workflow and then we can call our get on call sheet. Now if we hit run, we can see that we get me and I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to leave it actually just as that. That's all I need. I'm going to go ahead and rename this to let's say get on call time, get on call today workflow and we call this get workflow. Now I'm going to go ahead and close it and I'm going to use that information that I grabbed from that workflow in the front end. So here we can go ahead and we can grab that object. So we've got that get on call today dot workflow and we can go into the response and we can start selecting anything we need from that object. Because what's exciting about these curlies is that anything inside them is evaluated as a JavaScript expression. So you can use JavaScript to get dynamic data. You can also use JavaScript to write code and build some functions. So let's say we've got our is on call today and let's see if we can find out how much time they have left on call. So we can do a they come off call and then we can use moment.js which is another library that we have pre-installed and moment.js has a couple great functions that we can take advantage of. I'm going to just go ahead and copy paste this already. What it's going to do is it's going to get the on call response. It's going to find the end of the date end and then it's going to let us know how much time we have until then. And if I make this longer we can see I get off call in two days. Someone's going to take over in two days which is great. All right. The last thing we're going to do with the workflow is we're going to take advantage of the Slack API. We're going to use it inside of Slack. So I'm going to create a new application here, a new Slack app, and I'm going to call it video app, and I'm going to install it to the Superblocks workspace. And we're going to be using this Slack app in two different ways. First off, I'm going to go ahead and create a new slash command. And so I'm going to create a command and I'm going to call it on call question mark and we're going to need to give it a request URL. So if we go back to our workflow, we've got this find on call workflow and we're actually going to need to change the way that this is structured a little bit. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new workflow and we can call it slack on call and I'm going to go ahead and start by grabbing that previous workflow that we just used. So we can use the get on call sheet. And then I'm going to go ahead and do some Python to it. So let's go ahead and run this so we get the information. Now, the reason I'm creating this as a second workflow is mostly because of the way Slack and the requests that they expect, when they make a request to a webhook, they have a specific format that they want the response to be in. So I'm going to go ahead and just build a little Python function. And I'm going to have it take 
the on call and let's go ahead and rename this workflow to import on call sheet and we're going to go ahead and change it into the way that the slack request is going to is going to require it so let's hit run make sure this works ideally we get a body error which is great because it's going to be expecting a request to be made to trigger this function which means we'll need to have a body coming over so i can go ahead and deploy this in it call it initial deploy and then we get our URL. So I'm just gonna pull it right from here because it's pre-authenticated for me. And we can go into the Slack API. I can hit my request URL. I can hit my description, get on call person. And then we can go ahead and save it. And my head is in the way, so there we go. <laughs> so let's go ahead and install it to Superblocks really quickly. So now it's installed into Superblocks and now we can refresh this. And then we can do on call, and there it is, on call question mark, and it's gonna hit that endpoint. We're gonna request it from outside, and you can see it through in that good morning. I'm on call today, 1202, 1202, and we've got some extra metadata that I can clean up later. Now, last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set up a scheduled job. So what we're gonna do is go back to Superblocks. We're gonna go back to Superblocks and create this scheduled job. So let's go ahead and go new, create new, daily on call and we can hit create schedule job and we can set when we want it to run i'm gonna have it run on just work days we can have it run at let's say 10 in the morning that's about when i get to work so i'll be able to see it and we can add that workflow so we'll add the workflow and we can go ahead and grab that get on call sheet and then just like before, we're going to go ahead and make a request. For this instance, we're actually going to use the incoming webhooks feature that Slack has. So we can go ahead and turn that on and it'll give us a new webhook. We can add it. I'm going to install it to the test channel in the Superblocks Slack app. And we're going to get our webhook, which we can use in just a sec. So I'm going to go ahead and now that I've got this on call sheet, I can run it and I'm going to label it to just get on call sheet. There we go. And I'm going to add that rest endpoint. So we're going to make a rest call. It's going to be a post request. And we're going to use this URL. We're going to hit copy. We're going to toss that URL in there. It's going to be an application JSON, which means we probably need to give it some JSON. So let's scroll down into the JSON. And I've already pre-formatted this JSON blob to be in the Slack format that they need. So let's go ahead and scroll this down and we can see, you know, we're doing that get on call. Now if I hit run, it'll go ahead and run. We got an okay response back. And if we pull Slack, you can see that we just got a new request. And so all we have to do to turn it on is just hit that deploy function and then it'll, it'll deploy the job and it'll start running that job for us at 10 a.m. every day. So that's a quick run through of everything you can do with Superblocks. We talked about a bunch of stuff today. We talked about what Superblocks is, what you can do with Superblocks. We built an application together. We built a workflow. We used that workflow both inside Superblocks and outside of Superblocks. And then we wrapped things up by setting up a scheduled job. So we've done a lot today. We've covered a lot in the, in the 25 minutes so far in this webinar. And the platform, you know, is a whole lot deeper than just what I've shown off. There's all sorts of different types of components. There's all sorts of different stuff that you can do. And so I do encourage you to sign up for a free trial so you can get started. You can check it out, try it for yourself. And if you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email at Shai Ruparel or Shai at Shai Superblocks superblockshq.com or tweet me at Shai Ruparel as well. And if you join us in person, we do hand out t-shirts when we run these webinars kind of live or at events. So look out for, for that in the future. And we're really excited that you joined us and, and I hope you reach out and let me know if you need any help with anything. Thanks everyone. Bye.